it's november time and everyone is so excited about the royal enfield himalayan 452 while all this content is being shared there is a big mystery around the actual specs of the motorcycle and now uh, i have for you the actual royal enfield brochure for himalayan 452 and this one details out all the specs you need to know about this much anticipated launch of 2023 from Royal Enfield. So let us get straight into it. I'll not waste your time and let's get started. So let's start off first of all with the colors. Everybody knows that the Himalayan is going to come in five colors. The Hanley Black, the Kamet White, the Slate Himalayan Salt, the Slate Poppy Blue and the Kaza Brown. First of all, I would like to commend Royal Enfield uh, with the colors that they are offering. Uh, my personal favorite is the Casa Brown because it offers a great opportunity for the rider to make his or her motorcycle their own by adding a lot of maybe stickers, graphics, whatever they want to do it and everything just turns out so good on a light color like the Casa Brown. I know some people like the Kamet White some people are you know looking forward to the hanley black but for me my favorite is the plain vanilla casa brown so those were the colors and now let's talk about the meat of the motorcycle which is the engine all of us know it's a 452 cc motorcycle while the cubic capacity the cc's of a motorcycle are important the way royal enfield has distributed the power and the torque across the whole rev range of the motorcycle is pretty good 40 ps of power and 14 newton meters of torque these are amazing figures for the himalayan um, you know a motorcycle that has the same amount of torque and power kind of reminds me of the big daddy the 1250 gs which also has exactly almost exactly the same figures of power and torque so this is kind of the ratio that really suits adventure riders where they get enough torque to plow through the tough terrain and at the same time great amount of power to enjoy their highway rides so i think this sort of a combination combination of 40 bhp and 40 newton meters of torque is going to be very entertaining the maximum power comes in now at 8000 rpm 40 ps at 8000 rpm this is kind of foreign territory for a royal enfield motorcycle i mean we are used to seeing all those meters which have maybe like a 3000 or a 4000 max rpm uh, marking Remember those old Thunderbird days, those classic days, which were not too far back, but now 8,000 RPM for the max power. This is amazing. Royal Enfield is really progressing. Apart from that, the 40 Newton meter of torque is also coming at 5,500 RPM. So now we finally see the upper half of the RPMs where the motorcycle is finally going to be usable. Apart from these impressive figures, there is one more thing that really makes the whole experience amazing which is the six speed gearbox in the Royal Enfield Himalayan which means that you can have an easy vibration free cruise on the sixth gear and settle down possibly at 100 120 kmph and stay there all day long now how all this you know comes together in terms of the complete riding experience i'll be riding the motorcycle pretty soon so uh, hopefully you will get to hear my take on this machine obviously you'll be seeing all the media reviews by 10th of november so you will be get, getting that uh, feedback as well but i expect to ride it around the same time and give you my feedback as well the main thing about the suspension though is 200 mm travel at the front and 200 mm travel at the rear which is just amazing so kind of everything is coming along in terms of specs to make the royal enfield himalayan a very mouth-watering proposition next up let us move to the dimensions and the weight section what is interesting here let me have a look the ground clearance of 230 mm i think that is going to be really good enough to you know do all sorts of wild stuff that you want to do on an adventure touring motorcycle remember this is not a dirt bike one interesting bit is the seat height now with all these enhancements and the completely new engine completely new chassis we have a seat height which is very accessible I was recently riding the Scrambler from Triumph, the 400X, and it had a 835 mm seat height. Now this one, the Himalayan 452 has a seat height of 825 mm, which is the standard seat. There is also a lower seat option, which is 805 mm, 
which is 20 mm less than the standard seat that means a whole lot more accessible for all types of people who have different sort of heights especially in our country and mind you this is a kind of a global motorcycle so it will you know have to address that whole audience the americans and the folks in the south asian southeast asian countries as well so this flexibility in the whole uh, you know seat height department is very welcome at least from an indian rider standpoint we are looking at 181 kgs of weight curb weight is 196 kgs so those are impressive numbers and the fuel tank now is 17 liters even if you assume a very conservative mileage of 27 kilometers per liter which i think should be achievable with the himalayan 452 you can expect a tank range of 459 kilometers which is damn good for a motorcycle in this price range with this sort of power and talk figures all this aside the biggest revelation is the enhancement in the electronics that are available on the himalayan all led headlamp which looks pretty good and by the way this model does not have a tail light which means that the red tail light is integrated into the indicators those two indicators are going to perform the dual function of a tail light and an indicator you have riding modes and a type c charging port type c on a royal enfield yeah i mean times are changing and finally comes the instrument cluster which has been the talk of the town since we have seen that itchy butte video this one is a round pod which is a four inch round tft display with phone connectivity and full map navigation now this is a huge leap even if we compare it to any other motorcycle that is there under the 15 lakh rupees segment none of the motorcycles have this integration with google maps where you can mirror your phone and get the complete colored map thing on the instrument cluster i ride a mid-size adv called the triumph tiger 900 that also doesn't have that feature now this is coming at one fourth of that price hopefully and still it's gonna get that feature now this makes me you know think a little bit apart from this you will also have a media control option inside that instrument cluster which can be i believe managed with the controls that are there on the handlebar um, that is something that i'm not very sure of but media controls are definitely there so all these specs aside uh, Royal Enfield will also be offering a set of accessories to make the motorcycle even more adventure ready. You can see you have an option of getting an adventure screen, a headlight drill, touring mirrors, black rally handlebar, pad, okay, um, silver radiator guard, that's standard stuff, large engine guards for engine protection, rally protection, so a lot of protection related stuff that will be coming from Royal Enfield and the third party accessories market is going to really warm up with this launch of the royal enfield himalayan because i am pretty sure even with these accessories that royal enfield is offering there would be better ones that will be on offer uh, by the third party manufacturers who will make which will make the motorcycle even more capable and safe to ride on tough terrains and while we have talked about these accessories the bigger ones which is the standard pannier boxes and the top box along with the the pannier frames of course will be offered like the previous models now we have talked about all these specs these handsome specs that are on offer with the royal enfield himalayan i mean nobody none of us would have expected a royal enfield to have such amount of tech and you know features that are very usable which the adventure touring community would appreciate one big question that still remains is how these specs are going to come together and what sort of riding experience is on offer with the new himalayan 452 while we wait for all the media reviews to come out and i also patiently wait to get my hands on the himalayan 452 one thing that still remains a big question uh, when people will be going into the market to buy a motorcycle in this sort of a 400 cc category can they put their money on a royal enfield motorcycle without worrying about the quality issues i mean we have seen a lot of issues with the previous himalayan with the bolts flying off uh, cone set problems or engine oil leakage starter motor problems you name it all sort of problems that make your long ride a nightmare I hope all these issues will be addressed 
in the new Himalayan 452. That is something that I'm really hoping for. I mean, I do not want to get into a situation where we see a lot of videos coming, talking about quality issues on the Himalayan 452, maybe two or three months down the line, because this motorcycle is definitely gonna sell. There is no question about it. This is gonna sell because Royal Enfield guys have great marketeers in their team. They know how to market their product. Their products have never been the top notch quality products, but the emotional value that a rider feels when buying a Royal Enfield motorcycle, it is something very difficult to replicate for any of the other manufacturers in the Indian market. So definitely it's gonna sell. Let's see how it sustains over a period of time. That is the big question. To address some part of it, I think Royal Enfield have come up with an extended warranty clause, which is, as you can see here, five years, says 5,000 kilometers, should be 50,000 kilometers. I hope you don't mean that the lifetime of the motorcycle is going to be 5,000. I think this is a typo. So five years and 50,000 kilometers will kind of lend a peace of mind if they offer that sort of a extended warranty. Offering that warranty is one. The second part will be what sort of service experience will Royal Enfield offer for the Himalayan 452 because I tell you this is not a motorcycle that just Royal Enfield fans will buy. Somebody like me who owns a Tiger 900 and I know a lot of people who own the bigger ADVs are looking for a smaller adventure bike which is lighter and easier and less expensive to maintain. I think that is an audience that will also be attracted towards the Royal Enfield Himalayan 452. And mind you, this audience is gonna be a significant number. And to add to it, this audience already has a sense of, has a benchmark of customer experience or customer service experience in their mind because they are coming from those premium brands like Triumph, um, the, the Honda premium side of things, the BMWs, the Ducatis and all that stuff. So for these people, the bigger question is how will I get treated if I enter into a Royal Enfield service center with the Himalayan? Is it going to be something that becomes a pain in the ass or is it something that Royal Enfield will take care of? So service experience, the quality of the parts and the overall riding experience. These are the three things I feel are going to decide the fate of the motorcycle, the Royal Enfield Himalayan in the long run. Right now, it's all hype. Right now is all the buzz around the motorcycle, but say around Feb or March in 2024, that is the time we'll get to know whether this motorcycle was worth all the hype or not. So that is my take on the specs, the actual specs from the Royal Enfield brochure. And those are my expectations from the motorcycle. Like I said, I hope all things turn out to be in line with what Royal Enfield is promising and we have a great 400cc motorcycle to depend on. So that is all I had to share. I look forward to answering any questions that you have in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.